What is up, brothers and sisters? It's Jay Campbell, and you're listening to the Jay Campbell Podcast. Join me for regular deep dives with amazing beings whose work is manifesting a golden age. And remember, you create your reality by your focused thoughts, conscious words, and intentional actions. Raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. Hey guys, what's up? It's Jay Campbell and I'm making a quick commercial here for seercustom.com, my revolutionary cosmeceutical peptides company, co-founded with my business partner, Nick Andrews, who happens to be one of the world's top formulators. We have the revolutionary Alexano Grow, which completely regrew my hair. If you guys saw my hair about a year ago, I was almost bald. I even had the micropigmentation program from uh, Advantis. And now I've completely regrown my hair. That's just with version one. Version two is now in the marketplace or will be very, very soon. And it is three to five times as more effective than the current version or the original beta version of Oxano. We also have Royal Blue Serum and Sky Blue Cream, which will completely upgrade your face. I mean, I'm almost 50 years old. I have a pretty good complexion. I use it regularly. My wife swears by it. It will reduce fine lines and wrinkles, dramatically improve elasticity, and just the overall look and feel of your face. You feel great on both of them can also use them with red light therapy. There's all sorts of great stuff. So go to a seercustom.com. And if you're a first time customer, use the coupon J15 to take 15% off your purchase. I appreciate all you guys. And I send you tremendous love and light. Well, hello everybody. What is going on? It's Jay Campbell, of course, the founder of the Jay Campbell podcast. And I'm very excited today to be joined in my virtual stream yard studio. I'm not using zoom anymore. Thank God. Well, a very interesting dude, actually the owner of self hacked slash self decode. Joe, my brother, what's going on? How are you doing? Thanks for having me. It's good to have you, man. So Joe Cohen. So I'm, I'm sure a lot of my audience already knows who this dude is, but uh, been a long time coming. Uh, we were supposed to podcast together about four months ago and uh, life gets in the way and travel and all the different things that both of us are doing. And I wasn't able to make one of our uh, appearances. So I got him here today. It's going to be an epic podcast Uh, for you guys who don't know who he is uh, just a little bit on his bio. He says he's, he won the genetic lottery of bad genes as a kid. He suffered from inflammation, brain fog, fatigue, digestive problems, anxiety, depression, and a host of other issues frustrated by the lack of good information and tools that he could find. He decided to embark on a journey of self experimentation and self learning to improve his health. Something that has since become known as (laughs) biohacking. After creating the biohackers ultimate resource website, self hack Joe moved on to found the self decode, which is the ultimate biotech software platform for DNA and lab based health analysis. And today self decode helps tens of thousands of users improve their health through highly personalized health recommendations. So I've been using Joe's website self hack for a long time. I'm sure everybody in our space or field has, you know, to get answers. It's a, a, an absolute cornucopia of valuable Intel and insights and, you know, science and peer review and all the things that those guys do a great job of. So it's an honor to have you here today, bro. But, uh, you know, as I always do on this podcast at the very beginning, I kind of ask, like, you know, how did you get on the Jay Campbell podcast here today? (laughs) Um, I think I I just think that um, I I think I was uh, I mean, I'm not even sure exactly because it has been a while ago. It could either be that I was searching for something and I saw you. And I was like, oh, this is an interesting podcast, uh, uh, or um, you know, or some of my people may have reached out to you. Yeah. Well, I, I'm not yeah. exactly sure, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, no, it's cool. Yeah, um, I, I mean, you know, that's it's good. I want you to be honest and transparent. Um, yeah, and I don't even. I, I, I'm pretty sure that it was somebody that works with you. You know, had messaged me and asked about getting on. I think. I mean, it was a while ago. I think it was yeah, back in. Yeah. November or November. I mean, this message, the email that I have from is from uh, November 13th. Yeah. So it's crazy how fast the quantum world is moving and stuff like that. But uh, okay. So, I mean, you know, what do your background? I mean, obviously you feel you formed self to code, I mean, self hacked and then self to code because of your past and your experience. But uh, you know, where are we right now? You know, obviously today is May 6th as a marker in 2021. Um, in this field, this obviously burgeoning field of awareness from a science-based standpoint of our DNA and how we can obviously, uh, you know, change through epigenetics, you know, 
the things that we originally used to think that we couldn't change, right? So like, you know, we now know, I know you've spoken to Anthony J. you know, Anthony J is a good friend of mine. You know, we've done so many things different together, but you know, he's out there very outspoken now about like, hey man, your, your, your genes are just one point. Uh, but obviously your lifestyle, again, your epigenetics is the most important thing as far as like what you know, you're ultimately going to become. So, you know, can you kind of talk about that a little bit? Like, obviously you're the guy who's measuring people's DNA now, uh, in, a, in, in an awesome way, but like, how is it from a standpoint of like, you know, what do you say to the people like myself who say, you know, it's great to know your DNA, but ultimately it's your lifestyle and it's what you do that ultimately affects that. So like in your opinion, you know, wh where are we right now in that understanding? Yeah, I, I think that's a great question and a great point. Um, but would you say, let's say, I'm, I'm going to uh, throw a little bit of a question back. Um, sure. Normally, I'll, you know, I would just talk, but uh, would you say that individuals respond differently to different things? Like some people yeah. get better benefits from doing one thing versus another? A hundred percent. We're all biochemically unique. Yeah, so that is exactly the uh, promise of DNA. Is is basically the DNA is the blueprint, right. and with that blueprint, we're able to understand your biochemistry, right? It's right. it's telling us the code. It's basically here's the software for uh, the hardware and the software uh, for you as, a, as an individual, and based on this hardware, right, and software. You know, we can predict what will come out of your DNA. I mean, over time, that prediction gets better and better. And that's, uh, that's, that's, you know, we're, we're on a cusp now where the information is starting to get good enough where it's useful. Well, I don't think we were there uh, five years ago or right. even a couple years ago, right? I mean, there, there's been a lot of studies and, uh, coming out and they keep on coming out. And, um, and so, as time goes on, the, the story is going to keep getting better. But in 2021, we're at a point where you can get useful information from your DNA. It isn't uh, it isn't a smoking gun, right? There's a lot of sure. uncertainty still, uh, but there is information that is useful. And um, but it's also not the only story. And I'm not just talking about the environment. I'm just I'm talking about in terms of data, right? Because right. from your DNA. Uh, you can predict uh, to some degree certain lab markers, but the lab markers are also going to tell you what the current state of your body is, right? right? Yeah. Um, by telling, by understanding, uh, by putting in, let's say, symptoms that you have for something or mm -hmm. environmental, what environment are you in right now or what is going on with your life, that will also uh, give us more information. And so DNA is a great resource, but there's a lot of data points that you want to compute. And our goal at uh, Self Decode, really my goal and the, the goal of my whole life was really to provide information that allows people to compute this information. But, you know, with a resource like Self Hack, there's a limited ability to uh, look at, you know, 1500 posts and then you still don't know how everything applies right. to you. Right? right. It's like he's like, oh, I'm looking at this encyclopedia here. I got to read this encyclopedia three times. You want to stuff. You want the information that is most directly related to you. So you might search by a topic. But even within a certain topic, there's going to be you want to you want to go even more, more personalized. How you know, the more personalized you get. And so we don't only focus on DNA. And that's one of the things that's one of the ways we're differentiated. We also. Uh, give information about lab tests and uh, what the optimal range is, how you can improve that, and so that the lab tests are a great way to track how the thing, what you know, how your the current state of your body is. Uh, and part of the lab test would be microbiome as well. We we don't offer microbiome right now, but in the future we will. But uh, general lab tests are a good way to track uh, where the current state of your body, and um, you know, and we also have uh, we're building out these. Uh, assessments where we can um, and and the, 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 these personalized regimen where we can take in information and then use that using AI we uh, we compute what is the optimal things you want to try what is the prioritized things you want to try to get the yeah. biggest bang for your buck because at the end of the day we're not doing everything all the time nobody's perfect right exactly um, even you know, even the biggest health gurus are not doing everything all the time. They're not sleeping 
uh, the same time every night, right? If you, anyone who travels is not, is not being perfect, right? <laughs> I mean, there's no perfect no. health, right? There, there is sure. pollution in the environment. Uh, if you live in a city, it's going to be more pollution. Uh, you know, um, e e people like to focus on different things. Uh, you know, some people are, might be like really religious about exercise. Um, other people might be really religious about the supplements. Very, very few people do all the things all the time. Right. Um, maybe you would be one of them. I don't know. <laughs> no, I'll definitely not. <laughs> it's, it's, I mean, yeah, it's yeah. your point. It, it, to your point, it's very difficult to array everything. And look, man, like I, I, I applaud you. I mean, big data is essentially the future. I mean, you guys have figured out a way to like harness all these different data fields. And then, like you said, you know, allow the individual to mine for what is relevant to them. And, and, and trust me, man, I'm, I wasn't trying to question you at the very beginning. I mean, I think that and analyzing your genes is huge, you know, coming from, and I'm not really there as much as I used to be, but coming from the hormonal optimization space is where I kind of got my claim to fame. You know, I don't, I tell doctors now that like, look, dude, if you're not mapping a person's DNA before you go down the path of hormonal optimization, you're not doing the most that you can for that customer because that person should understand potentialities that may or may not come at some point in your therapy with them. Right. And again, this is advanced. Most of these guys are still not doing it because as you know, allopathic medicine is medieval, but you know, ultimately like the guys at the forefront are doing this. They are using self decode. You know, they are paying guys like Anthony J to have, you know, consultations for their top clients so that they can be aware, you know, that they have this advanced notice, so to speak of, what may or may not happen. So, I mean, I, I think all this stuff is incredibly, incredibly invaluable. Um, but as you said, like not everybody is no matter how organized and diligent and anal retentive can utilize all the tools that are now out there because there's just an overwhelming number of them. Yeah. And the, the uh, I mean, there, there's two separate issues. One is uh, we're not all perfect in that, you know, some of us could drink alcohol sometimes or smoke marijuana. And we know that that interferes with sleep or Anthony J would say marijuana is estrogenic or, you know, uh, or it could mess up your hormones. I don't know what your position is, but the point is, is that whatever, uh, someone's position, you know, whatever, whatever it is, th there's negatives and positives to different things at different times. Um, and, uh, so one, one thing is that, um, we're not all perfect and, uh, you have to prioritize things in your life, right? And what we prioritize is going to be different from one person to another, from one period of time to another. What are we, depending on what we're trying to optimize? Uh, and, uh, yeah. And so, uh, that, that's the, uh, you know, that's one part of the story. The other part of the story is the data, right? Uh, you cannot, uh, an individual cannot compute. Uh, billions of pieces of data, uh, you have to use the power of software. And, you know, it's like, it's like, uh, yeah, I mean, the DNA is really like millions of pieces of, of relevant data. And, and then other relevant data as well, you, it's just a field where you have to use software in order to uh, get a better understanding of your DNA and, and uh, what you need to learn from it. And so um, we try to give people useful information from it by prioritizing recommendations in given topics so that people can come away with, okay, here's my DNA. What are the things that uh, maybe I should try? Uh, I should try to prioritize or experiment with based on uh, my report. Beautiful. Um, so as I told you, man, I use self-hack, you know, I used to go there when I, when I was writing my books and, you know, I got it, you got details and stuff like that for certain things that were very esoteric that you didn't get. And you did an amazing job of, you know, basically um, just coal, you know, putting it all there, collating all that data, you know, so props to you and thank you. Um, but when did you know that you wanted to create self decode? So uh, as I was creating self hacked, uh, I would get a lot of feedback, like, wow, there's so much information here. Like, I don't even know what to do with this. <laughs> and it's like, you know, and people, and then I was doing consults as well. And what was clear is that, um, and I was like looking at people's DNA as well. And I was like, wow, there's a lot of data for me to look at. This is very, very difficult, right? And I was just thinking, hey, there's gotta be 
some software out there that's going to help me out with this. And there wasn't really any software that was able to help me. And so then I said, okay, I got to build my own software here. And uh, so then I went down that rabbit hole and I started to realize, you know, all the challenges with building a biotech company, right? There's, there's like, you have to have a lot of good talent. And so I've just been on that road for that's the, a that's long time. That's the way time. of the world, bro. That's the way of the world, man. Like, oh, fuck, I got to build a company. Now I got to find people smarter than me to hire. Fuck. Exactly. Uh, but yeah, yeah. I mean, even, but Self-Hacked is a company, right? I mean, that's a, it's a company. Self-Decode is like 10 times harder to uh, run as a company just because there's way more complexities involved. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, self hacked is is like it's like oh, you know, it's like we have the most in depth website on a bunch of different health content, and I think we did a very good job there. Uh, but that's you know, it, it's like the self decode is ten times more complex. Are you are you still involved in the day to day of self hacked or it's self running now? You just kind of oversee the money. Um, well, I, I'm not uh, honestly. Uh, it's. It, it, we're, we're not investing more resources into self hack, to be honest. And what we've done is um, we've like kind of made it as a resource for self decode because um, as you know, like in 2018, mid 2018, 2019, Google and throughout to that, you know, throughout 2019, Google had a lot of medic updates. Yeah. And so, any uh, website that is not a billion dollar corporation does not rank or part of a governmental system. It's just that's a fact. Really, that's right? such a scam. I'm sorry. I mean, <laughs> you can, you can have your own, everyone thing. can have their uh, opinion as to why that is, but just looking at the very, very bare and simple facts, you're not going to find a website that, that's going to come right. up a lot. That, that's not right. a billion. And, and you might come, I mean, self hack comes up once in a while. Like, it's not that you don't come up at all. It's, you know, it's, it's just that you're not going to come up on like a main term for. Right. Any well, I mean, look, dude, I have the same issue. I mean, my website gets 22 to 25,000 unique visitors a month and I have, you know, six or seven articles that are rank one for peptides. And if you search right. peptides, you don't get Jay Campbell. Right. <laughs> so I, mean, I, I know how it works, dude. I mean, but you know, thankfully a lot of us are out there are, you know, relentless and, you know, smart, you know, biohacker, the, our community, our community, and, you know, they, they'll yeah. find it, but yeah, dude, that's, that's so, such a joke, but we, I don't so, want to talk so about basically that. It, it, the, uh, I mean, look, a business at the end of the day, uh, it's not a nonprofit, right? Uh, I didn't right. start self hack was not, I mean, it was the way I like to do business is start a business that helps people. Exactly. And then because you're providing value, you get a return, right? right. That's, that's what, how I see, like, you know, uh, that's, that's the way of the world, that's, that's the businesses I like to run. Some businesses are more zero sum, right? But I like to run businesses where uh, I get benefit. You know, let's say a lawyer is like somebody, you know, you, you're suing somebody, somebody loses, somebody is gaining. The lawyer is a zero sum kind of game because, <laughs> because you're you're not what. Right. right. Yeah. Um, uh, but uh, but when it comes to like, uh, you know, what I, I like to do things that are like, okay, where I'm helping the individual and also because I'm providing service, we get money. So when it comes to self hack, um, it just be, didn't become a, a, a profitable business model to continue sure. releasing content. Like, yeah. uh, you know, there's well, server costs, there's, you have to pay for writers, it's very right. in depth content. Yeah. Uh, we had a very unique style that, that was more costly. And so, uh, you can't just keep that up with uh, without getting traffic from Google. And we still have like, uh, I don't know. I mean, we, we split up the sites now a bit, but uh, we still have about a half a million uh, views a month um, just in general. Yeah. and But now I see more as a resource for the, our community, people who want right. to search for something. Um, yeah. So it's more of an internal resource now rather than, this is uh, my business, you know, it's, it's not something that we're, we're, you know, we're spending money. It, it, it's the way of the world to change. And, you know, the value that it played at the beginning for people like me was, you know, incomparable, you know, I mean, it was amazing. I mean, it still does right for certain people and stuff like that. So, I mean, you know, again, props to you, you know, for doing it and, and, and then also, you know, changing as the world changes, right. It's kind of where we're at. Whenever I speak and I tell people and they ask me, you know, total newbie neophytes, clueless, inflamed, 
not taking care of themselves. Like, what is the one thing you can tell somebody? And I say, you know, what gets measured gets tracked, right? Like get a laboratory analysis done of your inflamed, diseased, you know, F M M you know, body and understand like, where you got to start? Because if you don't have a clue, I mean, I could tell you to lose weight and clean up your diet, start working out, you know, increase your cardiovascular movement patterning, but who cares if you can't understand, you know, your basic biomarkers. And, and as you know, dude, like even now, like a lot of people get blood work done and don't have a clue, like how to read it. Exactly. You know? Send it to somebody like me and be like, uh, you know, like, Hey man, I, it, yeah. I'm not going to read your blood work for you unless you actually pay me, you know, but I mean, I've gotten in, you know, for the last three or four years, thousands of messages from guys, you know, bros. And they'd be like, bro, you know, look at my SHBG, you know, I mean, it's like, but I mean, the reality is, is like, this is a very important topic, you know, maybe of all the things that we're talking about today on the show is like understanding your biomarkers and, and more importantly, understanding that you have to measure your biomarkers. So can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, definitely. I think, um, like you said, you, you can't, uh, you, you have to uh, measure something to track it. You can't track something if you can't measure it. Um, and so I'm, you know, I'm very into this data driven approach to health where, sure. uh, you know, like, let's say, let's say you go to, um, you know, if, if you go to some health practitioner to help you or some coach, or, I mean, the, the, when I was doing health coaching, the first thing I did was like, let's find out what markers are not in the optimal range and right. let's track that because we need, you need some objective source, right. right. Of, of how people are doing. Are you getting better? Are you moving in the right direction? And so I always thought that labs were extremely important uh, to figuring out your health. And um, you know, I think part of that is hormones is, it plays a very big role um, I mean, you got to You got to understand where you are uh, with yep. your labs. And not only that, they also provide um, I think when you have like a goal, when you have when you know there's a certain place you want to be, it also provides motivation to get there. It's like, OK, I know I'm still not at the place where I need to be. I need to improve. Right. Yeah. No, it's critical. I mean, mission critical. Um, you know, and, and again, I'm just speaking for the hormonal optimization space. The other, the, but the issue though is like the, the bigger issue to me is like not getting so caught up on, you know, being confined into like a narrow range of a certain thing because, you know, it, you're supposed to be quantified in there when in fact, you know, the ultimate goal of any, uh, you know, whatever it is you're doing, you know, the goal is always going to be balanced and, and do you feel good, you know, well being. And so I, you know, I see a lot of times, especially with physicians in the hormonal optimization space, they're trying to keep their patients like constrained in a narrow range of certain criteria. And it's because, you know, and they'll tell you to, you know, when you're in a private conversation with them, they'll say, look, bro, you know, I could get audited by the state medical licensing boards, you know, and so all my patients have to be blank. Right. So it's like, you know, I, I get where doctors, you know, have to cross that line, you know, where, you know, it's not just about like their patient's ultimate health and well-being. Unfortunately, it's about making sure that that patient stays within a narrow range that they can't get drunk out, you know, on charges or whatever that they're not, you know, doing what's best for the patient. So, I mean, it's just, it's just a, it's a balancing act. You know, you're, you're, you're playing this game. That's why like, you know, I always tell guys like when I recommend physicians, I'm like, I know the physicians that know, the, you know, what's truly important and not trying to, legislate their practice based on confining guys into narrow ranges and stuff like that. But um, with your stuff, it's a lot different, you know, cause you're just measuring data points and you're looking at like um, you know uh, the polymorphic, you know, gene transcription and all these other things that could possibly happen that say, Hey, this is a predictor and you know, you may have this issue. And again, that's why, you know, when I, when I talk to like, you know, well-to-do sophisticated people, I straight up tell them, Joe, I'm like, look, dude, before you go into this, you need to get your genes measured. You know, you need to know like every possible permutation that may or may not happen. Um, and, you know, there's no reason to spare this expense. So get this done, you know. And I don't think most people today, you know, before it was you got, before you guys were doing this, you know, there was Ancestry and there was, what's the other thing? 23andMe, whatever. And now there's other competitors coming into the marketplace. I know there's True Diagnostic, you know, so there's, there's all these different big data analysis of stuff. And again, you know, 
you know, the aura ring, you know, and there's so many ways now to track your health and your performance and your activities and stuff like that. So I, I just think that again, from my standpoint, um, it, it, it's critical that people understand to not obsess on everything, but in reality to track the important stuff. And clearly if you're going to go on hormones, right, you're going to start using therapeutic testosterone and whatever else, you know, there's other things. Uh, peptides, growth hormone, whatever, you should have a good, you know, awareness of like what your predisposition is and what your genetic, you know, your, your, your codons say, right? Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a great point. So um, there's, you know, there's a bunch, there's a bunch of things, right? So like, let's say, first of all, I, I think what you brought up is um, when it comes to lab tests, it's not just you know, here's the range, right? Uh, actually, it turns out that the optimal range for individuals is an individual thing, right? Exactly. It's, it, it depends on the individual, right? Totally. Uh, an optimal range for one individual could be one thing. For another individual, it could be something else. Why is that the case? Could be they have different receptors that biochemical receptors that uh, their genetics are causing, uh, you know, to change in a certain way. And maybe they're not responding to something as well, or they could be a super responder, uh, there's a lot of things you cannot see from a lab test, right? But uh, so what you do want to see is you want to track. Uh, that's that's where the benefit of tracking labs is, is because you will see what the optimal range for you is. And then if you see something is out of whack from one year to another, then you know something changed in your body and you need to, you need to get that back into the optimal range, right? Uh, now, you know, it, it, it depends – what age you are, right? I wouldn't, you know, th that's not something you want to say, oh, that's my optimal range, right? You're like eating McDonald's all day and your testosterone is low, right? So, but if you're like very healthy and you, you have a lot of energy and everything is great and your testosterone or other sex hormones are in a certain range, you want to track that over time, even if you don't have an issue so that you can see how that's changing over time. And you could see if, if that takes a dive from one year to the, to the other. You can be like, hey, what, what just happened here? Uh, and so, yeah, genetics does have a, a, a role in that in terms of, you know, uh, an individual's optimal. One of the things we're, uh, we want to work on in, in the, uh, you know, um, sometime in, the, in this year is, um, you know, we basically, for every hormone, we could tell the person what their genetic uh, predisposition is. And then we could tell them, here's what your optimal range should be based on this hormone, right? Based on your genetics, because that is going to be changing, right? So the, the gen, that's really where the genetics and labs kind of come together. It's like, uh, whereas now you might need a health coach and who's going to help you track it and help you help guide you. Um, I mean, you, you, you know, a lot of times you could benefit from that, but even, even just to synthesize more information, but um, yeah, that, that I think is like some, that something that's going to be really cool where either genetics gives you an idea about what your personal optimal range is. Uh, yeah. Awesome, man. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Jay Campbell. Quick commercial for the optimized tribe with us Navy seal, Michael Jaco and I every Monday night at 6 PM Pacific standard time. There is not a single group online where you will get the highest level Intel that Michael and I can provide you from mastering intuition to fully optimizing your hormonal health, to improving your fitness, to raising your vibration and increasing your consciousness. There isn't a single group online with two dudes like Michael and myself, helping people become the best version of their self. It's literally $99 a month and you get a 90 minute call with me and Michael every single Monday night. Don't wait another second. Sign up now at the link, theoptimizedtribe.com. I appreciate you guys and I send you tremendous love and light. So one of my, my big deals, you know, my jams is like understanding, um, the, you know, ha not hacking, but basically increasing cognition, right? Like I love to understand like the best modalities on doing, on how to do that. Right. Like I'm a huge modafino or you know, modafino, whatever you want to pronounce it, like user. I've been you know big supporter of using it for a long time. You know, I use very micro dosages of it. I take like 50, you know, 75 milligrams of it. I, I, I don't, you know, I've always been a very, very therapeutic micro dose guy of everything that I take in my life. And you had asked earlier about like alcohol and weed. I'm a moderation, you know, I'm in moderation guy. I don't give a shit. I've used everything, plant medicine, 
you know, I'm, I'm all about it. If it's going to bring a better conscious experience or enhancement to you, whatever. Um, so, uh, but, but in reality, like I'm, a, I'm big on nootropics. I'm big on enhancing cognition. Can you, you know, talk a little bit about like best ways that you have found in your study of like upgrading the brain and upgrading obviously a person's focus abilities? Yeah, definitely. So, uh, first of all, we do have, I mean, you know, neurochemistry is very personal. Right. Um, and one example of that is I actually don't do well with uh, modafinil, uh, believe it or not. Like um, a lot of people for some don't. reason. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but I have a very weird response to it, meaning for, I think my dopamine levels are already quite high. And when I take it, it it just makes me spaced out. I don't know. It's weird. It's a weird effect. Right. It doesn't even make me more productive. It makes me less productive because you want your neurotransmitters to be in a balanced range. And if you are already balanced, you know, net biochemically, genetically, or, you know, obviously there's an uh, environmental interaction as well. Uh, but, uh, you know, genetically, I'm probably in the, the ways that modafinil is working, I'm, I'm already in like the 99th percentile in the population. You give me modafinil, I go overboard and there's, there's a negative effect, let's say, right? So, uh, number one is uh, just, you know, we have a genetics report uh, for nootropics. Uh, so that's, you know, and, and you know, m most topics um, you could, you know, th there's like genetics and I mean, almost basically almost everything, there's uh, genetics involved and then there's things to uh, improve it. But uh, just for me, I mean, yeah, I mean, I've, uh, I'm, I'm of the same school as you. I, 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 I'm very into moderation. I try something, see if it works for me doesn't uh i i skip it that's it uh none of the pharmaceutical nootropics work for me just i took a lot of them none of them work for me uh not modafinil none of the none of the pharmaceutical ones uh parastam barastam those things things don't work for me either bro none of them <laughs> I, mean, I was using those things back in early 2000s man they're all yeah I mean, I, I, yeah, I, honestly, uh, I found, uh, uh, you know, a decrease in cognitive performance from the RAS temps and, uh, medafinil as well. And, uh, yeah, and yeah, RAS temps gave me a headache. RAS temps gave me a headache. Absolutely. Gave yeah. Me a headache. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, but, uh, in terms of things that do well for me, um, I would say, uh, you know, I think it depends on what you're trying to go after. And so I think that uh, mood plays a very big role in cognitive function, having like a stable mood, um, you know, uh, being happy, you know, being, and, and that's something that I've, um, uh, that's something that I've used my genetics for as well, uh, to look at like, what are things I could do there to improve my mood. And so that, that's kind of like the past year, I would say, you know, I, I, every six months I have like a different topic of interest um, or, you know, it could go longer. But for the past year, it's been like my mood, to be honest. Like I realized, hey, wait a second. You know, this mood thing is uh, quite important. I mean, I've always been into a lot of topics, but like it's just more my preoccupation for the past year was like, hey, um, I realized that my mood is not optimal. Right. right. And I could get that more into the optimal. And so I started like. Um, I changed up my regimen in certain ways and my mood has just ha it had profound impacts on my mood. And I think that improved my cognitive function as well, just because I don't get into uh, states where I'm like stressed out. It's, it's, it's very interesting. Like um, if I get into these states, I know exactly what to do and then I'm good. Right. So I kind of like, I have this trip system where it's like, Oh, wait, I'm, I'm getting there. I got to, you know, up the dose here. And, uh, so yeah. So in terms of like nootropics and, and you'll notice that a lot of people who are in like Reddit nootropics, 70% of them have some kind of mood issue, right. Or, or like that's their main issue. And they're taking a lot of these nootropics that are actually just improving their mood. <laughs> and they're right. just like, Oh, my brain's functioning so much better. I'm just not uh, stressed out all day or whatever. Um, you know, like think about if somebody's depressed, you know, your, your brain is just done. Like your memory, I mean, like you can't, you know, I, I don't know if you've ever been depressed in your life, but it just wipes out your brain, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, and so I think 
when it comes to mood, I think uh, mo um, um, cognitive function and nootropics, I think mood is the number one thing that you need to make sure uh, is good. And, and we know that like, you know, it has an impact in every aspect of your life, but like just even longevity, we know that like people who are the happiest live the longest as well. Right. And that has to do with the mood. And so whatever I think, and, and that's actually why we, uh, it's an area of focus for us at self decode. Um, you know, for, for me personally, what we're doing is because I think that if you optimize your mood, everything else is improved in your life. Right. Right. I mean, it's kind of like optimize, like if you have like a serious health problem, um, you know, optimizing that can improve your life. Right. If you've got like inflammation all the time, you've got diabetes or, or cancer, right. You want to optimize that of course. Right. But, um, you know, even with all these chronic issues, we always see that mood and stress has a role in it in, in some way or another. Bro, it's all vibration. I mean, basically, yeah. like if you're energetically, if you come from an energy, energy and frequency of love and understanding and compassion, and creativity, and you treat people, you know, in the same way that you would love to be treated. I mean, all those things disappear. I mean, I, you know, this isn't a spiritual podcast, but I mean, that's kind of all I talk about. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, you're 100% right. I mean, you know, the reality, no, it, yeah, your I, I mood think, is everything. Yeah. Everything. But I think there's, you know, there, there's, uh, it's kind of like a loop, right? Because on the one hand, your biochemistry is influencing how you react to things. And then there's a spiritual side of things where you say, well, you know, let's just manifest love and, Etc. Right. That's kind of like the spiritual side of things. But for me, I cannot get to that spiritual side of things without altering my biochemistry. Like I can, I cannot tell myself like, let's just everything be love. It just doesn't help me. Like, I'm just like, I need to alter my biochemistry first to get into the, the right state. And then that, you know, things fall in from there. Right. Then you can tell yourself uh, that stuff. So I, um, of the, yeah. So, I mean, like for me, it's just like, if I get into a bad mood or something like that, I'm just like, and you know, it's like, well, I didn't like, I, what I, I don't take, I, I generally don't take a lot of, uh, like, I, I don't take every supplement that I like every day. And the reason is because I take it as needed, right? Sometimes, you know, a lot of these mood boosting supplements, sometimes they're also suppressing in a certain way, right? They, suppress like maybe like they're calming right and so you don't necessarily want to be calm every second of your life right sometimes you want to just like be super excited or whatever right right um and, and while you know for other times and, and there's different stuff for that too like for example i find that when i want to improve my mood and i'm going out to social events most of the mood based stuff is not gonna work well for me because it's too calming you want to be like more proactive, more talkative when you're out. And so things like theanine, I find, is better for that. Whereas anything that is uh, serotonin related, um, I find it to be just too calming and GABA as well, right? It's just too calming. Um, it, it doesn't put me in, in like the, the most social state or the most excited state. And so I'm more, too mellow, I find. Interesting. Um... So you have this other thing that you wanted to talk about uh, that you guys have with self decode now with the anxiety report. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, definitely. So we have, uh, you know, we have a bunch of reports that are related to mood and, you know, there's uh, mood is mood. could be uh, carved into a bunch of um, topics, right? There's anxiety. There could be like depression or, or happiness levels. Um, and yeah, and, and so uh, we have like a few topics. This trauma, right? Trauma is like I'm I'm a believer that a lot of people have like these micro trauma events um, oh, yeah. throughout their life, right? And, and you know, you think like, oh, I I just have like this trauma from this, that, and the other, and it kind of a lot of it could build up, and that's kind of where these um you know these psychedelics come to play, where you it, it changes like these traumas. I find. Uh, change your brain chemistry in a certain way that is the opposite in how the psychedelics, the psychedelics are the anti-trauma, um, you know, stuff where it, it, it reverses 
you know, these traumas can be long lasting and the psychedelics can reverse it in a long lasting way as well. As long as the, you know, the psychedelic experience is not a trauma in itself. <laughs> right, right. right. That, right. that could be, right? If you right. go overboard, if you're not in the right setting or whatever. And so, um, yeah, I think uh, that, uh, yeah. So there's a lot of topics that we have about mood and uh, and, and your genes. And, and what we do is we prioritize the things, the recommendations that could give you, you know, the, here, here's what you want to try first as it relates to these things. Um, yeah, and so I think that's a it's a very it's a very interesting topic, and um, uh, you know, for nootropics, I like that's my main source of nootropics. I don't really uh, do I take anything. I mean, maybe like I'll take some alpha GPC for uh, nootropics. Um, y- you know, stuff for some stuff for BDNF, maybe a bit of lithium orate, but any generally any of the the. The lithium ortate is also good for mood. Like any of the real, new, like uh, almost all the nootropics that work for me are also good for mood, uh, with maybe the exception of things like for acetylcholine, you just boost your acetylcholine a bit, like alpha GPC or galantamine or something like that. I uh, I, I don't just just, just as an FYI, and my audience knows, like I, I only use modafinil when I'm writing, you know, and I I haven't been writing in a while, I'm building my company, so. Um, I mean, I'm building, I'm writing sales and product pages, but I mean, uh, the, the reality is that, uh, I'm, I'm in agreement, like everything, you know, I mean, what is it? The, the difference between a pill and a poison is the dosage, right? Like if you're going to take anything, you know, whether it's pharmaceutical, gray market, a peptide based product, uh, you know, a nootropic, you know, do, do your homework and start, you know, go start low, go slow. You know, that's, that's kind of the way, you know, again, from my opinion and the way, you know, I have done things, but you know, I haven't even used Moda. The last time I took Moda was, I think, shit, it's been a while. I think it was like in October of last year. Wow. Uh, and I, can't remember, I can't remember what it was for. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I don't take anything. I mean, I do a lot of inner work, a lot of meditation, you know, you're talking about BDNF for me, the best way to get BDNF is to fast for 50 hours, you know, 48 to 50 hours, just fast you know, drink water and fast, you know, and that's where I really connect, uh, what I call to, you know, that field, that energy of source consciousness, whatever, you know, it's a different to- topic with different person, different people. But, uh, bro, I appreciate you coming on the show here today. Um, from a standpoint of like, you know, where, how can people, what's the easiest way for people to connect with you? Um, you know, obviously they can go to self self Is there any place else that you want to position people to go to? I mean, we, uh, there's my, uh, personal, and there's the company Instagram. My personal Instagram is Mr. Biohacker, MR okay. Biohacker. And then there's uh, at Self Decode for uh, Instagram. But uh, yeah, they're just basically the main uh, the, the, the uh, main product that we have is uh, Self Decode. And um, <clears throat> we can. I I, I, we, I don't think we uh, spoke about any kind of. I, I think uh, you know we, we didn't really talk about any kind of uh, discount for your listeners. Um, but uh, we can give your listeners a discount. Uh, I could just, you know, create a coupon code for them. Okay. Uh, what, what would you want to call it? Uh, I mean, if you're going to use a coupon code, does it, you guys create coupon code? Just use J A Y C. That's what I usually use for all my affiliate partners. J uh, C. Yep. Exactly. J A Y C. Okay. Yeah. So. Uh, okay. So yeah, if you uh, type in J C, you'll get ten uh, percent off self to code. Beautiful. And um, yeah. Awesome, man. Well, I, I appreciate it. Like I said, appreciate you coming on. So, okay, you guys. So for, you know, as always, please support the amazing people that come on the Jay Campbell podcast. Follow Joe at Mr. Biohacker on Instagram. Um, his uh, Instagram is also for self to code is self to code. And then of course their website is self decode.com and go to their site and sign up and, you know, get yourself analyzed for 10% off using the code. J A Y C. So brother, I appreciate you coming on here today. Um, any, any final words? No, I mean, just, uh, you know, I think the future of biohacking and, uh, health is, is this personalized digital, you know, data driven health approach, whether it's uh, labs, genetics, environmental, uh, taking in a bunch of data and then really, um, you know, getting, getting to the, the, the root of, how you can improve your health in in the, sh- the shortest possible way. 
Awesome, brother. Awesome, man. I, well, again, I appreciate you coming on the podcast today. You guys, please support Joe and Self Decode. And remember, raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. We will see all of you guys very soon.